Assalamu alaikum everybody. Uh, here we are starting lecture number five, which is about antenna arrays. In this lecture, we will be talking about uh, like some introduction and then cover the most elementary arrangement of an array, which is just two element array. And this is very useful to study the bigger and more general uh, setup for n element uh, array, which is 1D array. Then we we'll do like this n element linear array and like a global setup and discuss the three dimensional characteristics. Then we'll go into the more sophisticated and in the same time, the more practical setup for planar array, which is 2D array. Okay, why do we need antenna arrays? In general, there is like two different ways to increase the directivity of antennas. And as we discussed before, there is many situations where do we need our antenna to be directive. For example, like for radar application, for point-to-point -point application, for tracking. So many different cases we need the antenna to be directive. Of course, there is other application where we need the antenna to be like close to uh, like isotropic or omnidirectional uh, antenna, like the case of uh, mobile base station. And we have different applications for directivity and each application does have its own directivity requirement. But for many applications like directive antenna, which is an antenna with like a small angle of directivity, or like a small uh, beam angle or like high directivity antenna is needed. To reach this like high directivity requirements, we have two ways. Number one, either to enlarge the electric dimensions of the antenna, which is to make the antenna large with respect to the wavelength. This is the electrical dimension. The other way to increase directivity is to arrange multiple antenna uh, array. So the pattern of the antenna array depends on geometrical configuration, which means are the antenna elements like arranged in a linear setup, in a circular setup, in a rectangular, spherical, cylindrical. What is the geometrical setup? What is the relative displacement or distance from one element to the other? What is the excitation amplitude from one element to the other? What is the excitation phase of each element with respect to the other? And what is the element? Are we using like a loop antenna? Are we using like aperture antenna? Are we using like a dipole antenna? So those are the elements that are affecting the antenna arrays, uh, the antenna array performance or the antenna arrays uh, better. And as you can see, we have like a large number of elements that are like affecting the performance of uh, the antenna array. And let me do this. So that it can be something that is clear or not. Okay, so we have like many degrees of, of freedom or many elements to design the performance of the antenna array. So, as I said, the first item that we're going to study is two antenna array. So, an array that is composed of just like two elements. And this is the simplest it can be, like less than the individual uh, antenna. Okay, so what is the setup? The setup is two elements, two antennas, and we would like to study the pattern of this setup. What is the total radiation pattern from this antenna array? So the simplest setup that we're gonna have is the one shown here, where we have element one and element two, like placed along the z-axis uh, on a symmetrical way. So if the two elements are separated by distance d, first element will be d over 2 
at z equals d over 2 and second element will be at minus d over 2. The observation point is this point here and this observation point will be like doing the antenna radiation pattern so this uh, uh, observation point is in the far field which means r or the distance from of the observation point with respect to the center of the antenna array is much larger than the separation between elements so r is much larger than d of course like this uh, sketch is not uh, like two scale so this is the exact geometry of the problem but of course in order to simplify the solution we'll do like a number of uh, approximations that simplify our setup so let us here like pay attention to a number of things so here we are assuming the element of the array to be infinitesimal dipole so very short dipole and we assumed also that dipole is horizontal the dipole is parallel to the xy plane so this is number one number two like let us like pay attention to the angles and distances so the angle between like z axis which is the axis of the antenna array and the direction of the observation point is theta 1 and theta 2 from the center it is theta distance from element 1 is r1 distance from element 2 is r2 distance from the center is r so let us like recall this configuration of the exact geometry of the problem okay for simplification which is very accurate uh, approximation we will like solve the problem assuming this setup and this is like a very good approximation if you remember that r is much larger than d so the observation point is very far so those three lines actually can be approximated as parallel with a very small uh, like error between theta 1 theta and theta 2 so this is we'll assume that when we are very far or when we are in the far field of uh, this array we are looking at the observation point with the same angle theta okay so this is the approximation that would simplify our uh, solution now we we'll assume like the two elements are fit with the same magnitude with different phase so the current the input current or the maximum current of element one is i naught e to the j beta over two the input current for element or like the maximum current for element number two is i naught e to the minus j beta over two where beta is the phase difference of the excitation between element one and element two and we separated them this way and as i said this approximation is when r is much larger than d so now we are interested in finding the total field radiated by this array so we want to calculate the total field at the observation point total field is coming from radiation of element one plus radiation of element two so now let us see from uh, the dipole antenna lecture what was the radiation from a single element so this is the radiation from a single element in the far field it's an infinitesimal array and this is the exact solution we have three components we are E theta and H phi of radiation element. The ER is proportional to R square, and uh, the two other components, E theta and H phi, are proportional to R in the far field. ER will be decaying much faster than E theta and E phi, and we can neglect ER. So now the radiation from an infinitesimal element placed along uh, the z-axis so this is placed along the z-axis 
uh, at the origin. This is the expression. The expression for E theta is some constant J eta K L divided by 4 pi multiplied by the maximum current. The maximum current I naught, and this is the propagation factor that I like sort of like circled here, e to the minus JKR over R. So this is the radiation element, or sorry, the, the term that is showing the radiation, and this is sine theta. Now pay attention that theta is the angle between the axis of the infinitesimal element and the direction of uh, like radiation or the direction to the observation point. So pay attention to this factor because it will be like very effective or like very uh, dominant in affecting the performance of this array. So now this is the radiation from a single element, but this radiation is for an element that is placed along the z-axis. Remember that we are like studying this case, an element that is parallel to the xy. So this is like the theta here is not the same as the theta here. So theta in this expression is the angle between the axis of the element and the direction of the observation point. So now let us go to our uh, problem where we are interested in finding the total radiation. Total radiation is the total field at the observation point, which is radiation from element one plus radiation from element two. Both elements, as we can see in the previous slide, it's, we have this constant, J, eta, K, L, 4, bar. Those are all constants. Also, I naught is constant. And remember that here, the input or the maximum current is I naught e to the J beta over 2. Here, it's e to the minus J beta over 2. So, substituting in this expression for element number one, we would have this unchanging elements or like on this uh, changing constant j eta k i naught l over four bar. Then we have this term e to the minus j k r one, and here is r one. K okay, for element number one, e to the minus j k r one, and this is minus minus, which is plus. So we have j beta over two, which is the phase of the current feeding element number one. And this is multiplied by cosine theta one. Why it is cosine? Why in here it is sine? Okay, so now sine is theta is the angle between the axis of the element and the direction of the observation point. Here, this is the angle. So let me do this. So this is the direction of the axis. So this is the angle theta that we have uh, into our expression and you can see easily like this theta here is 90 minus theta of the coordinate system that's why in the expression here we have cosine theta 1 cosine theta 2 instead of sine because of the arrangement of the antenna element which is parallel to the xy plane rather than along the z-axis. Okay, so this is like the factor from element number one. This is the factor from element number two. 
So this is distance R1, this is distance R2. This is angle theta1, this is angle theta2. This is phase plus, because minus minus, plus beta over 2. This is minus plus beta over 2. So this is the total electric field of the two elements. Now we're going to like apply our very famous approximation which is for phase variation for this element we use different approximation than for the uh, amplitude element so amplitude element here is 1 over r2 and cosine theta so this is amplitude and this is the phase for the phase element r1 here will equal r minus d cosine C, uh, d over 2 cosine theta okay let us go back here so we can say that okay this is r1 we can if we put like a, a 90 degree here okay let us assume this is 90 degree so r1 will equal r plus this distance which uh, is d over 2 cosine theta so r1 is smaller than r by d over 2 cosine theta in the same way we can see that R2 is larger than R by the same distance, which is the length of this element, which is d over 2 cosine this angle, which is uh, theta. So we go back here. Okay, so as this back to laser okay so r1 is smaller than r by this value r2 is larger than r by this value when we are talking about this phase element but when we are talking about the uh, magnitude or amplitude we can assume that r1 equal r equal r2 theta1 equal theta equal theta2 okay so this is we will neglect because here we like assume those three are uh, parallel so that's why we use just one theta and this is like a very conventional approximation uh, for this problem so now this term here will have e to the minus jkr multiplied by e to the minus jkr uh, sorry d over 2 cosine theta minus beta over 2 and this term here would be like similar so r will be r1 will be r cosine theta 1 will be cosine theta r2 will be approximately r cosine theta 2 will be approximately cosine theta so the summation we take r outside cosine theta outside and also we take the part that is e to the minus jkr outside here we'll have from element one what is remaining for the phase is e to the minus jkd cosine theta plus beta all over two and another term with minus sine so this is like e to the j angle e to the minus j angle which is cosine twice the cosine of some angle so this if you look back you will find that this element this like coefficient or like this part is the radiation from a single element placed at the origin this is and that's why it's called single element then this two factor is the array factor or which is caused by having two elements in our array so this kind of derivation is showing us that the total field radiated by an array equals a multiplication of 
two factors the single element the radiation from a single element multiplied by the radiation uh, component that is related to the array arrangement and this is called the array factor the total uh, field is the radiation or sorry the multiplication of those two elements so even though we did this derivation with uh, like just two elements that is uh, valid for array with any number of identical elements which you don't necessarily have identical magnitude phase or spacing or anything we can like if we have like any different setup where we have i1 and i2 completely different in magnitude and phase and the spacing of element one and element two are not uniform or like if we have the number of elements to be like three or four or n in general we would have the same thing the total field is comprised of two things the radiation from a single element multiplied by the array factor the array factor depends on the feeding amplitude the feeding phase the element arrangement spacing and position with respect to each other so in our case for two elements the array factor does have this expression which is 2 multiplied by a cosine function so the total like the maximum of the uh, cosine function is 1 so the maximum of the array factor will equal 2 so the normalized uh, array factor will be the array factor divided by the maximum which is a cosine function of course normalized means the maximum equal 1 and cosine function must have this property Okay, so now we would like to examine like how this array will affect the radiation pattern. So we'll consider like an array factor. Uh, we would like to examine the array factor and total array pattern for the case of two infinitesimal dipole under the following conditions. Condition number one d equal lambda over 4 d is a separation between the two elements lambda over 4 and z r in the in phase this is number one number two the same distance all the cases we have the same separation lambda over 4 between the two antennas and in case number one we have beta equal 0 beta equal 90 degree beta equal minus 90 degree and let us see how those three different setup will affect the array factor and the total array pattern total array is the multiplication of the element factor which is proportional to cosine theta multiplied by the array factor which is cosine of this expression under those three different setup so for first one, beta equal zero and d equal lambda over four. So if beta equal zero here, d will equal lambda over four. If you just substitute and draw the radiation pattern for uh, an element and for the array factor, you must exercise this. And here in this case, we have like two, uh, two plates where we are interested in. We are interested in the elevation plane. In this case, the elevation plane uh, would be like Zx or Zy plane, and the azimuthal plane in this case, which is the xy uh, plane. What we have here is plane so we have like this is sine theta remember that we have our antenna axis antenna axis not the array axis antenna axis is along this direction so like it has this a shape with theta and for the array uh, factor this 
one, you can draw the matrix. You will find it like this. So the total would be the multiplication of the two. We would have this uh, plane here, and this is theta as a function of theta. So this in the elevation, we have this expression. You can also try to draw this for the xy plane. So where the variable is phi. And if you can see here, we have no dependency on phi. So that the phi uh, on the xy plane, the only variable is phi. We would have like theta equal uh, 90. So we have zero. So ninety equals zero. So all of this will be just no radiation in the xy plane. No radiation in the xy plane. So everything is uniform and equal to zero. Okay, second case which is same separation of different phase uh, difference between the two elements. We draw the same element factor, but now because beta is not zero, we have this uh, like array factor force B2 like this substitute here and draw this uh, function. Now we go for like the total radiation, it would be the multiplication of those two, so we'll have like this shape. So the majority of the radiation is going into this direction. You need to like do this exercise yourself. You draw it yourself and uh, like make sure that you produce the same uh, sketches or same graphs. If we go for third case, we see that the same element factor, the array factor, changes this way, and the total uh, my result would be this uh, expression here. So again, you need to uh, exercise this and sketch the array factor yourself and make sure that you know how to do the multiplication between the array factor and the element factor or the element uh, relation factor. Okay, so let's see now we move to the next topic which is like n element of linear array of course like there is a lot of like formulas that you're going to see uh, today and these formulas are not universal because this is a series formula we need to know how to draw the equation for example here for this geometry we are assuming the antenna array to go this way all the elements are going uh, from zero to the positive z uh, direction. For some other derivation, we can put those elements uh, like symmetrically around the origin. So like half of the elements in the uh, negative z and the other half on the positive z. So the derivation will be different. And from now on, we'll not pay much attention to the elements. So we'll assume just the r n element because what is really like we are searching is the array factor. We know that the total radiation equals the element radiation multiplied by the array factor. So the element radiation is not like the focus of this lecture. From now on, we'll just like focus on the array factor. And for this arrangement, we have N, capital N element of uh, like array, uh, uh, antennas, arrange it from origin up to uh, ND in the Z direction. We'll use the same approximation that all the angles will assume the vectors from element to observation points to be parallel, and this is a good approximation if the like observation point is far uh, in the far field, which is like R, in this case R equal R1, because R is from origin to the observation point. So if R1 is much larger than, in this case, ND, which is the array, uh, like 
spread the array the antenna array spread n multiplied by d if r1 is much larger much here means more than 10 much larger than this uh, distance we are in the far field and this approximation of assuming the vectors from element to observation point are all parallel so we have all the angles here equal uh, theta so what we are behind here is we need to calculate the array factor for this arrangement okay the array factor would be like this element for element number one element number two so on so forth so here we will assume that each element is fed with the same each element is fed with the same uh, amplitude and we have just variation of beta from one element to the other so the first element is fed by current i naught with zero phase element number two is fed by the same current but with phase equal beta and for element number three it's same amplitude with phase equal uh, to beta so the phase from one element to the other is progressing by uh, beta so the array factor this is very similar to what we did here for two elements we have this like same amplitude and phase uh, difference element here in this case for two uh, element array we have beta over two phase for element one minus beta over two phase for element number two so this is the array factor we are doing similar thing here for element number one phase equals zero element number two phase equal uh, beta so on so forth and this is the uh, difference in length between r and r1 r2 r3 r4 so the array factor in this case is the summation from n equal one which is this element to n at n the last one the phase equal n minus one beta for the uh, distance is n minus one d so this is the array factor <coughs> okay so this array factor is a, a geometric series and this is the law for geometric series it's progressing by a coefficient uh, r which is not equal to one in this case it's e to the minus so it has uh, this is the array factor uh, sorry the geometric series factor here is this element e to the j n minus one phi so this sorry epsi this epsi equal kd cosine theta plus beta so if we just come here we'll find that this element element number two is kd cosine theta plus beta second third element is 2 kd cosine theta plus 2 uh, beta so on so forth the nth element is n minus 1 kd cosine theta plus n minus 1 beta so we can write the summation as this and this is a geometric series factor and the array factor in this case is the summation from n equal 1 to n equal capital n and from <clears throat> the geometric series summation law it is 1 minus the geometric series factor to the power n which is the number of elements divided by 1 minus r so apply this to our case so instead of one minus we make it uh, like the, the e to the j n phi minus and instead of one minus at the bottom so that it's just like easier to read so now we can take like half this coefficient out so e to the j n epsi over two 
outside what is remaining from element here e to the j n psi over 2 minus e to the minus j n psi over 2 we do similar thing at the bottom you can see easily this is twice j sine of this factor and this is uh, 2 j sine this angle so the array factor will equal like some phase and n over 2 epsilon divided by sine epsilon over 2. If we are talking about the amplitude of the array factor, this phase element is not important, and we are like left with sine of, our, of n over 2 epsilon divided by sine half of epsilon, which is like the sink function. We know the approximation that when the argument of the sine function in radian is very small, the sine function equal the argument. Sine one uh, half of epsi will equal half of epsi approximation. It's a very uh, common approximation. And this is like sine x by x, we know sorry, when it is sine like nx by x, and we know the peak here equal uh, n. Where is this coming from? The peak is happening at uh, the derivative of this function equal zero, and this is happening when epsi equals zero, sine zero over sine zero is not defined, so we just uh, differentiate the Nominator and differentiate the denominator, we find that the maximum of this function equal n. If we divide it by n, this will be the normalized array factor. So the normalized array factor equal approximately when epsilon is small, it is sine n epsi over 2 divided by n epsi over 2, sine x over x. Remember. What is epsilon? Epsilon equals kd cosine theta plus beta. What is beta? Beta is the progressive phase of the antenna array. From element to element, the phase is increasing by beta. So for first element, phase equals zero. Second element, phase equals beta. Third element, phase equals two beta. So on, so forth. And d is the separation from one element to the other. First element is at uh, z equals zero, second element is at z equal d, third element is at equal to d, so on so forth. So this is the epsilon. And this is very important to know what are the elements that are affecting the epsilon, which is our antenna array design. The phase and the uh, spacing between uh, elements and in this case the amplitude is not a factor because we are assuming uniform amplitude for the antenna array. Okay, so now we would like to study the nulls and the peaks and so the general uh, shape of the antenna array factor. So this is the expression here we would like to know where the nulls of this uh, array factor is. Where are the angles or what is the conditions for this array factor to equal zero? And we can see that this will equal zero if the nominator equals zero, but the denominator doesn't equal zero. And this is happening when this argument here equal zero but this argument here doesn't equal zero. So again, this will like we'll have zero if this factor n epsi over two equal like any integer positive or negative uh, uh, multiplier of pi, while the bottom doesn't equal uh, zero. And this is happening at these cases, which is 
n phi over 2 equal plus minus n uh, y except for the first element because for the first element the nominator and denominator equal zero so it is a big not uh, a null so those this is the condition for the nulls n psi over 2 which is n over 2 kd cosine theta plus beta equal plus minus n by and we can just do the math and find the nulls angle is happening at this expression remember here this array factor just depending on uh, eta there is no dependency on phi why is that again this is because of the symmetry we have symmetry with respect to phi because all the elements are on the z axis so there is no effect for phi the only effect is for theta and those are the angles for theta to equal null at n equal 1 2 3 4 so on and so forth so this uh, expression is to find the nulls again nothing to memorize you need to like learn the procedure and learn how to apply this null condition and avoid the case where we have like zero over zero because most probably this is a big not a null so you need to like learn and understand the procedure so that you can do it yourself so if we draw the array factor and here we are drawing it uh, in my Cartesian coordinate what we have actually is sine x over x where in our case x equal n epsi over 2 so we would have a peak at n epsi uh, over 2 equals 0 which is at epsi equal 0 we have a peak and this peak is because it's normalized uh, this peak equal 1 because this is the normalized array factor the first null will happen when n epsi over uh, 2 equal by second null is when we have 2 by so on so forth and this is again a Cartesian uh, drawing or sketch for the array factor pattern from here we can get like side loop level we can get half power beam uh, width or like what is the angle at which we have like a half power uh, beam and this is like half the half power uh, beam width so we can get like many information about the array factor from this sketch which is just a sync function the amplitude of uh, a sync function the second important thing to uh, study for the antenna array factor is the maximum. Where is the maximum? So the first maximum is happening as uh, we said when we have like the bottom like epsi over 2 equals 0. So this is the first uh, peak that we see and this is of course happening when Epsilon over 2 equal uh, like integer multiples of pi. So the first one is happening when m equals 0, when epsilon over 2 equals 0. So this is the first uh, null, sorry, the first peak. So on and so forth. We can get the second peak and uh, second maximum, so on and so forth. So the first maximum is happening at m equal uh, zero which is this case here cosine minus one lambda over two by d multiplied by minus beta so this is the first uh, maximum that we have second maxima will be happening at m equal one second uh, max third maximum is happening at uh, m equal two so on and so forth so there is some uh, important definitions for like some like very common kind of uh, antenna array. Uh, broadside antenna array is an antenna array where its maximum or major or principal uh, peak is happening at 
theta equal 90. End far as where the maximum is happening at angle theta equal 0 or theta equal 180. So in general, those theta is measured from the axis of the array. So in our case, the axis of the array is a z axis. So broadside means that the peak of this array factor is happening 90 degree or perpendicular direction to the array axis. The end fire, the peak is happening along the array or like in the opposite. So it is on the z direction or the negative z direction, and this is called end fire. Those are very uh, common uh, cases for, or like definition for uh, antenna array. So we are saying, for example, this is a broadside antenna array, which means an antenna array that is arranged. So it is 90 degree from the antenna array axis. End fire array is an antenna array arranged so that the peak of the antenna array is along uh, the axis, either like positive or negative, of the antenna uh, array. So, for the case of theta equal 0, d equal 1 over 4, n equal 10, you can see that the main uh, loop of the beat is happening at theta equal 90, and if this is an array arranged along the z axis, this, this would be like a broadside. Of course, we know those are called the uh, side loop uh, of the button. Here we have another case, so we have both sides and in front. Mm. So we have uh, two beats, a beat along 90, another beat along uh, 0. And we can say it's, it's the same, and another beat at 180. So this is an antenna array arrangement where we have both sides and in front, both in front uh, loops into our uh, Array factor. So there is like another definition that's called like grating loop. Grating loop is like this case. So we have a peak or a maximum, and then we have another maximum where the maximum here and the maximum here are the same. So there is two or like two or more main loops. In this case, the second loop is called like grating loop. If we have a third loop, it would be like a, a second grating loop. And then you check the condition from the like a ray factor uh, expression. You can see that like the position of uh, the maximum is happening at m equal zero. So if m equal one, m equal two, so there is a grating loop at one a grating loop at 2, and if you check the condition for this to happen, you will find that the grating loop, second maximum, well, just show up if the separation between elements is greater than 1. If we maintain, for this case of just varying the phase from one element to the other, uh, if we maintain the separation of the distance between the antenna array, uh, less than lambda, then we guarantee that no grating loop. This is one of the exercises that you would do yourself. You check the expression for uh, like the maxima, which is happening at n equals 0, 1, 2, and any other uh, integer, and you well, search for the condition that makes no second uh, principle, no second peak. Or no grating, you will find this expression is that d must be less than lambda. If d equal lambda or d is greater than lambda, we will have more than one d, or we will have, or we will start to have grating uh, loops. So now. Again, let us 
like look into uh, like an end far uh, array and find the conditions for having the maximum towards theta equal zero in the positive z direction and what is the condition to have the maximum at theta equal 180 which is the negative z condition so for the first one we will find that we need to have uh, this angle equal zero when theta equal zero so this is the condition for ordinary end fire that epsilon equal zero at theta equal zero you will find the condition for that is beta equal minus k d the progressive phase from element to element equal minus k d if we want the beak to be towards the 180 which is the negative z direction then we need to have epsilon equal zero when theta equal 180 and we'll find that the condition is that beta equal plus k d so this kind of exercise that you need to have the skills to do it and if, for example like i can give you like certain figure and tell you okay i need this antenna array setup to have the array factor like any fire at angle equal zero or like both side of the angle equal 90. if i said like broad side i don't need to specify anything else broad side means the big is 90 degree to the array axis and what is next is for you to find the conditions on uh, each side and from this condition you will find the distance and its relation to the phase and so on so forth so as i said for maximum at theta equal zero would have beta equal uh, minus kd and in this case for example if we have like n equal 10 d equal one over four this means that beta equal minus 90 degree for theta equal 180 we need to have like pi sorry beta equal pi over two so in this case for d equal lambda over 4 and equal 10 we have this normalized array factor where is the peak is in the positive z direction at theta so it's end fire at theta equal 0 and this is an end fire at theta equal 180 you can draw the expression and you can like in MATLAB you can generate this graphs by drawing like the 3d uh, better for this array factor and one thing here that we noticed and talked about is that this linear array does have the ability to scan the beam or the array factor in one angle so the array factor here is just depending on theta and if we can control beta the phase shift from one element to the other we can do a scanning of course if we move the antenna spacing we can do scanning but this is a mechanical displacement if we keep the antennas in a certain uh, linear arrangement on the z-axis and we have control electronic control of the phase of feeding uh, current to those antennas we can do what is called like steering or uh, like scanning uh, with the button so we can move the heat from zero to certain angle to 90 just by controlling B and this is called scanning so the linear array have the scanning ability in one direction in our case because it is along the z-axis uh, our scanning ability is in the elevation uh, plane there is no ability to change with uh, phi so there is no as a mutual uh, scanning ability we just can scan in the angle with respect to the axis of the antenna in our case it is theta. so the ratio can be scanned 
by controlling the phase at any theta point. At all the times, it will be omnidirectional, which means for phi, there is no uh, like variation. It is all the same. Again, because of the symmetry, the antenna array are arranged along the Z axis. And also remember, this is just the array uh, factor better. Of course, this would be multiplied by the element uh, factor, and the total would be uh, the real radiation pattern of uh, our antenna array. Okay, so what we studied so far is n element along the z axis. What would be the case if those uh, elements are not on the z axis? What if they are on the x axis or like y axis or like in arbitrary direction? How this will affect the array factor? This is the topic here. So let us consider that instead of having our antenna array elements arranged on the z axis, now they are arranged on the x axis. What would be the case? So if you remember, for the array factor, it is the magnitude multiplied by certain angle, uh, like tip side, where for the case of elements along the z-axis, we have epsilon equal kd cosine theta plus beta. Okay, when we change, when we change the antenna array axis, what is really changing is the angle theta. So in general, cosine theta will be cosine uh, gamma, and this gamma is the angle. Uh, that we're going to talk about. So what is gamma? Gamma is really the angle between the observation direction, AR, and the antenna axis, which is the definition for theta. Theta is the angle between the antenna array axis, in this case it was Z axis, and the direction of observation point. So in general, the gamma angle is the angle between the observation direction and the antenna axis. So in this case, using the dot product property, cosine gamma will equal A axis dot AR. So this A axis can be AZ, so we'll have cosine gamma equal cosine theta. It can be any direction, it can be X direction, so cosine uh, gamma will equal sine theta cosine phi. If the antenna array axis is the y axis, cosine gamma will equal sine theta sine phi, and so on and so forth. It can be anything else. It can be like AU, any direction. We can easily find cosine gamma, which is the dot product of the unit vector along the axis of the antenna array and AR, which is the direction of the observation point. As we discussed before, the normalized array axis is 1 over n sine n epsi over 2 divided by sine epsi over 2, where for the z axis, uh, epsi equal cosine theta multiplied by kd plus beta, but for general, it would be cosine gamma 